For our next example, I'm going to leave example three here as an exercise for you to do. It is the exact same code as example two, but we've changed n to n squared in that outer loop. So I'll let you try to analyze this one. You can either use formulas or bound it, whichever way you see fit. But I am not going to do this one for you. You can go ahead and try and do this one on your own. So what we're actually going to do is this example four for our next example. So just like we've done in the past, we're going to let t of n be the runtime. And since the innermost line of code there is again just basic arithmetic, we're assuming it takes constant time, we're then going to express t of n as summations. So t of n is equal to the sum i equals n squared to n squared plus 4n of the sum from j equals i to n plus i of c. So just like we saw before, just our bounds are getting messier and messier as we go. Same exact first step occurs. J does not appear inside of the summation. So we, that is for all intents and purposes a constant. So we take the sum and and multiply by the number of terms in the summation. So this is equal to the sum from i equals n squared to n squared plus 4n of c times the number of terms. The number of terms here is the top bound minus the bottom bound plus one. Notice something nice is going to happen here. The i and the minus i cancel out. So this is equal to the sum from i equals n squared to n squared plus 4n of i and minus i cancel. And we have c times n plus one. And now we do not need to bound this. I does not appear inside of that summation. So just as we did with the J summation, we only need to multiply the sum and the thing inside of the summation by the number of terms in the summation. So this equals the top bound minus the bottom bound plus one times the term that appears inside, which is C n plus one. Let's do our little bit of algebra here. Notice the n squareds also cancel. So this is 4n plus 1 times c times n plus 1. Hopefully we can look at this and go that's something like n times something like n. This is going to be in theta of n squared. So even though i appeared inside of the summation originally, it actually canceled out and went away. So this is in theta of n squared. Now we make our final conclusion, thus t of n is in theta of n squared. Notice you need to be careful and always check if your summation variable appears inside of the summation. In this case, it always canceled out for us as we were going through the problem, so we did not need to worry about it.